do you mind um, maybe giving me just like a short rundown on, on kind of what brings you all together and what it is that attracts you to each other to create music as one cohesive family? Yeah, sure. So basically just a, a real quick history. You know, we started in 2016. Roberto and I were, were founding members. Um, the other founding members have since either moved out of the area or have kind of gone on to do other things. Um, Preethi joined in 2018, great singer. Um, and then Allison joined a little bit after that on horns. And essentially, you know, since 2016, we've been, we've been trying to gig quite a bit. On average, from 2017 to about 2019, we were gigging like once a month all over DC, trying to write a, a lot of original material. And then finally, um, a year ago, we said, okay, let's sit down and do a full album. So we did an EP before, three song EP, and then we did a one song single and the idea was hey let's um you know we like funk rock soul disco let's tie that all together and what what is kind of the the coherent cohesive element of that and to us that's groove music so anything that has kind of like a groove to it that's kind of our thesis statement as a band and i think that's the unifying principle that attracts us as band members because um, everyone comes from a different genre, different preferences, but that's kind of what unites us. Is it, uh, is, is there a specific intention in focusing on groove music? Like um, I was reading uh, about a producer who had written a song after a, a year of investing time spending in, in dance halls in London. And so that w they left that experience looking to write a song that kind of it, it captured what that meant to her as people being able to get away for the on the dance floor from the things that are you know normally what overtakes their lives do you have a similar goal with kind of connecting people with this groove well I'll, i can take this one the personal yes because i main main purpose for me is to gig uh, and I like I like the contact with the people you know I really need to see the people and I like people dancing you know this to me is the, the most uh, the the best uh, uh, thing when you when you play music there's definitely nothing worse than playing your music and having an audience kind of sit and stare back at you and I agree we are at least I joined the band because I wanted to gig and have uh, a group of people to play music with that my friends could come and enjoy. So I think all the music centering around like being able to dance on the dance floor is just conducive to that. Yeah, and just um, I would say no matter what our topic is, so I mean some songs are just foolish kind of like ditties and then some of them are really talking about real issues or um, talking about things that people are thinking about that are happening in the world but whatever it is um, everything has this sort of groove element to it this danceable element this this uh, fun element and I think that's probably the thing that ties everything together um, so I, I know Tyler, uh, you had released some uh, like a piece of music not too long ago that was a, a bit of a protest song. Um, mm -hmm. You'd kind of represented that as uh, as a, a solo project of sorts. Um, but it sounds like that there is a lot of content in this record where you're trying to draw attention to difficult topics and doing it with a fun groove behind it. Um, can you talk a little bit about kind of having that mixed media concept, if you will? Yeah, absolutely. So um, our Phil Marnell, who is the original drummer, um, well, actually started as the singer and keyboardist. Then he switched to drums when Preeti came over and uh, joined us on vocals. He wrote a lot of the lyrics. He's a very talented writer. Um, and I think he wanted to have substantively engaging ideas, whether it's we have a song called Feds Don't Fail Me Now. So it's kind of talking about you know, how we want um, a positive government to succeed. We have another song that talks about Mary and Barry and kind of um, the, the myths around his character and trying to explore some of the historical truths and positive contributions he made to DC as a city, a human rights activist, civil rights, et cetera. So there are, um, you know, the, the lyrics try to explore serious substantive issues 
And I think that's nice almost as a Trojan horse within danceable music because it makes it approachable for people. And then when they hear and think about the lyrics, it makes them think as well. And so that's something that's, um, that I really like about this band is we focus on substantively compelling, engaging, thoughtful ideas. And it's not just throwaway concepts that you may hear in your average pop song. I think it might even be fair to say that a lot of the songs are character driven um, or story driven. I think Phil was prone to that in his writing. Um, and in that way, I mean, I always, I love Steely Dan, so I'm a huge fan, but in the way that all of our songs are telling stories um, that are really thoughtful or that are speaking to, like, that they have more con context, it's a lot like Steely Dan, because when you listen to Steely Dan, you know, I don't know, like Haitian Divorce, I suppose, that music has a vibe, but for the most part, the songs can be very happy or very sad, and that doesn't necessarily mean that it's reflecting what's really going on in the story with the characters. And I think that a lot of times our songs have that kind of thickness of story in them, regardless of the vibe of the tune on top of it. And so, you know, just because the lyrics, there's an idea for a lyric um, when Roberto comes in with a bass line or Tyler comes in with a guitar groove or Preeti adds her kind of sulfur, sulfurness to it, um, or the horn lines are punchy or funky, that's just the music that we came together to make. And the lyrics are telling sort of a fun story for the audience to work out. How do you think that that is going to translate with like the rest of the, of the narrative that you're going to tell with the, the release? Um, is, is, are you intending on having like album artwork, song artwork, or uh, music video elements that are kind of reflective of this dual nature of Zen worship? Well, we are um, looking into various video options. I think you're right that some of our singles that we um, hope to release, um, we pick songs that seem to have a message that might um, resonate um, the most with people, seem to be universal. We're looking into concepts. And we've released a couple of videos um, for other songs that aren't in the album that have sort of a narrative element to them too. Um, we had one that was like an anime type video based on one of the um, more romantic songs that we have in our repertoire that we're not releasing. But so we, we've kind of built up um, a repertoire of little videos um, and hopefully we'll continue to do that um, with our other singles. And actually it's what, what you can do in this time, right? During the pandemic, you know, because we cannot really gig. So for sure, well, video is, uh, is something to, to be exposed still to meet our, our fans. What uh, was, was the pandemic a blessing in the sense of being able to kind of focus on the recording of this album? Uh, I don't, yeah. I mean, I, I would argue, I don't have the other feel. I don't think it was a blessing in a sense, but I think um, it, it, I think that we found new motivation in making the album. So we had wanted to make this album and we were sort of in the middle or beginning part of recording. Um, and we wanted to be able to record at, you know, Tyler's house, he has a home studio so that we could get the same sound. Um, and it's always better when you can get together and, and record tracks together. Um, but, and so it was definitely a challenge. Uh, and then I know I went home to Florida because a grandmother passed away. And so with COVID and illness and, and things that go on, it's really hard to finish projects. However, I think that um, for me, for example, I think that the album had different importance to each of us. In other words, some of us wanted to gig more. Some of us wanted to write new songs. It's so hard to really commit to a project. But because of COVID, you know, finishing the album, recording, mixing, I think a lot of artists right now are experiencing this is actually a great time to develop and put out new songs. Um, and I also think that because we are primarily a gig band, the album suddenly became really important because we have fans uh, who wouldn't be able to hear us in COVID. And now they have this really great album with what I think is 
you know, the most thoughtfully fully written tunes that we have that they can play at home in their living room or pop into their car and have Zen worship with them because we can't gig right now. So it was initially a huge obstacle, but it gave new meaning, dedication, focus, and purpose for this band to actually put our music onto a recording that we can give to people. I, I don't know if everyone feels similarly about it. Um, maybe everyone's no, just like, no, COVID was the worst thing ever. <laughs> Never it was, it. <laughs> no, yeah. I agree. We were planning to put this out anyway. We have been working hard um, the first couple months of the year before things shut down um, with the hope to uh, be able to actually gig and promote this album um, live. But, you know, things happen and um, we were, we're happy that we were able to, you know, take this opportunity to uh, really focus on the sound of the album and make sure that it was exactly what we all wanted and agreed on and um, and that was a good thing. I actually really enjoyed working on the album during COVID because the, the nice thing about doing it in my home studio, at least the bulk of it, was we had a lot of layered horn parts to do multi harmonies, a lot of layered vocal parts, a lot of layered guitar parts. That just wouldn't have been possible in a traditional studio because we don't have enough money to pay hours and hours and hours to sit in a full studio. And then it's hard um, to dedicate the full amount of time to doing all those different types of recordings if you're also constantly trying to gig and do other things like the other band members had talked about. So for me personally, I think COVID was a blessing to, to have the time to focus on the album. And it's also um, a nice thing to be able to have a creative positive project that comes out at the end of this year, especially in light of all the societal chaos in the country with the election tension. It's nice to have something positive that put that is it's a hopeful look forward, basically. And just to add like more layers of depth to that, I guess, to sound important, I don't know. <laughs> um, I think with COVID, it's sort of a day-to-day -day decision for everybody about whether they're going to hit pause on their projects or life until we get through all of this and how you're feeling on a day-to-day. -day. And I think being part of a band that where, you know, everyone said, we're not going to hit pause on this project. We're going to find ways of continuing to build and make art and music um, was really helpful. And I think that Zen worship for the most part, um, you know, different members of the band really said, you know, Tyler did a lot of heavy lifting on this. Roberto did a lot of heavy lifting. Preeti was constantly inspiring for me on those days when I was just like, I don't really feel like making music or recording. I can't perform in front of my friends. What's the point of this? Just having this album and this music and having completed a project helped, I think, me get through COVID and feel like we're putting something out there. And I hope that you know, other people who are going to buy our album or are listening to their favorite musicians actually make new tunes. It gives them something to feel excited about. And it also is the statement that we don't have to hit pause. We don't have to hide in our dark rooms and our beds alone. We can, you know, continue to find ways of living our lives under these new circumstances and make sure that, you know, when we can go back out into the world and there is a vaccine, that we can look back at this time and say we've continued to maintain relationships and forward our art and persist. Um, so yeah. That's great. Yeah, I, I'm in a similar boat. I'm <clears throat> doing a lot of remote recording stuff with my own band right now. And so the, the fact that, that everybody is equally as invested in moving the project forward makes me feel inspired that I'm able to kind of do my part because I know everybody else is. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sure you all feel yeah. the same. Yeah. I mean, it's a day to day, like, and when you're in a band, as opposed to being an artist alone in the studio, if you just don't feel like doing something, everyone else on the team, you know, is going to keep holding your feet to the fire and the projects get done. So I think, you know, I think that there's something to be said for that. Hopefully you're experiencing that as well. Absolutely. I appreciate being held accountable. It makes all the difference in the world. So when, um, you know, the fact that you're such a, a live, a live band, you know, uh, what, what do you think was the biggest hurdle in trying to 
kind of recreate your expectations of what the recording should sound like? It's mm. a good question. <laughs> um, I think we, so the last time we actually performed, we did perform once um, in that sort of socially distant concert, but the last time we performed live actually was right before things shut down um, the beginning of March, correct me if I'm wrong, or if that was the end of February. But um, I think that we went into it, like I looked a lot, when I listened to the recordings, um, I listened to some of our other recordings that we had done um, earlier. We listened to versions of the recordings like um, throughout the process. And I also went back to some of my our live videos and things like that um, to sort of re get a feeling of how I, this is at least my personal way I, I dealt with um, this issue is like to try to figure out how I feel when I sing the song live. And I wanted to make the recording capture that um, sound as much as possible because it's really hard to do that in a studio when you don't have people that you're feeding, at least for a vocalist, when you don't have people that you're feeding off to, it's really very hard to create create that like emotion and and um that sense of feeling in your um in your voice and have it come through so I tried to sort of like do that uh, looking at how I sounded in certain other shows and things and then trying to gauge from the recordings how um like if if certain effects would take away from that or add to that and like so that's sort of how I evaluated um they, these guys know I don't like too many effects <laughs> but that's sort of how I evaluated um my sound um and moving forward so I think what we ended up with was something that was really and I did a lot of things on the recording too on the recordings too that um I never actually did live like so a lot more vocal um things that because there was just more space where I could do that and and have like multiple layered vocals and things like that so that was like kind of a new and different thing for me that I wouldn't have done live so um I don't know if that really answered the question <laughs> we, we also I think it answers the question yeah. I thought you were really brave a little bit trying new things but still sort of you know shouted parts that needed to be shouted or captured that feeling. it also was nice too because you know, we were recording it um, the way we recorded it. We could reach out to Ben, who was the original trumpet player and wrote a lot of the horn licks and ask him, you know, to hop on or, you know, go into the archives and pull some of his great solos. So, you know, it's not just me playing horn on the album. And that's really exciting uh, to have that as an advantage or throw some organ on it. So usually when we don't do that on stage, so I, I thought everyone, you know, Roberto's solos are just as fun and just as funky and exciting and Preeti's voice is just as engaged. I thought though, Tyler did a great job of experimenting with sound effects or organs, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, it really ended up being very interesting because they're definitely the songs you'll hear at gigs and the same vibe, but we, we, we weren't afraid to add or bring old, mix old with new and things like that. And the other thing I would just add is, I think it was a fun challenge to actually record the album out of my home studio and then work with another professional mixer and master to finish it. Um, I, 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 I listened a lot to like live James Brown albums and live Prince albums versus their studio albums to try to get a sense of and read up how do sound engineers create a, a dynamic, funky, soulful album. Um, and that was very challenging. Like the technical elements of not compressing the horns when they're doing like big flares or not, um, you know, making it sound dynamic and charged enough it was actually quite difficult. Um, and I, and I, I've read a lot about how sound engineers have, have uniquely had difficulty recreating funk albums because you just can't, it's, it's so difficult to, to recreate that live tension and live um, mm -hmm. momentum and sound. So that was a challenge, um, and that was definitely a fun challenge, but it was harder than I expected, actually. I think, Tyler, though, like one song I think that displays the experiment and the, the growth is Grandpa. That's a song that often we play at concerts as filler. It's, it's just it's kind of a short little dance break. The lyrics are really minimal, and every time we play it, it really has 
it's very moldable and clay. And in that song, I think Tyler gave me a lot of direction on trumpet. Um, I don't know what the recording process was like for everybody else, but I feel when you hear that suddenly that James Brown and what that song really is and its purpose comes together. And I, I would say a lot of that was Tyler really um, stretching out and learning the bounds of that and really um, leading us to think deeply about that song. So that would be, I think a lot of the songs are ready, written and thought through and fully developed. But Grandpa, I feel, benefited a lot from this process and the things that Tyler was studying. And, you know, Roberto really, like, laid down this thick rhythm and creepy leaned into the James Brown. So I think that one song on the album, you know, it re- I would argue it wasn't really a song until this album came to be. I agree. I think that's the that's one song that um, really transformed the most maybe feds also really transform the sound um using this process of of trying different things and and i thought i thought it was good because now you know the other added benefit of this is now we're going out with these um songs in that are completely changed for the better so when we do start gigging again we will have improved on some of our um songs based on this this experience is there a little bit of a I don't know the 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 fear that now you have to modify something live to to like imitate the record. <laughs> um, so, I mean, it's okay, not really. I mean, sort of. I think that I don't, I'm interested yeah. in hearing everyone's response to this question if we have time because for me, I'm a jazz artist. So my my the fans and my friends and often the bands I'm in hate my instinct which is i don't think any time a song goes out on stage it should be the same how boring then just listen to it on the album but I, most people don't think that way you know if they hear the solo the trumpet solo like this way on the album when they come to the concert they want to be able to sing along they want it the same so for me it doesn't bother me but i want to know what everyone else thinks because i think that i'm an outlier in that sense i'm more like you allison so i'm my background is more improv um, um improvisational style and uh, acapella and i used to just do things i never sang a song the same way twice before i started singing in bands so um yeah i'm the same way i like but i don't think tyler feels that way and i don't know about roberto i i think i will i will miss uh, some layers for sure especially the guitar because there's a bunch of layers that make um, way more color uh, in the songs. And when we play live, yeah, yeah I will miss that for sure. Especially I, the I mean, the, the issue for me is that now that we have the, the studio version, um, mm-hmm. I'll miss the keyboard parts, the multi-guitar harmonies, the multi-vocal <laughs> harmonies. I mean, some songs, we mixed 27 horn parts. There's just no, I mean, there's obviously, if you have a big band, James Brown style, you can do something like that. But when you get four or five of us playing, I mean, it just sounds like a miniature version of what we can try to recreate on the album. The other thing, and I like, I like the jazz improv points that Allison and Preeti made, but the other thing is that um, um, when you listen to the, like, the traditional funk, Shaka Khan, James Brown, Prince, uh, Funkadelic, they improvise in some parts of the solos, but the things that are so catchy and hooky and that draw people in, are the repetitive melodic lines, the repetitive um, melody lines, and the repetitive harmonies that give that structure. So I, I'm attracted to that because I think for the average listener, the average person enjoys something that they hear that's repetitive and that mm-hmm. gives them kind of ear candy. Um, and, and we can insert improvisational solos in certain sections, but my songwriting preference is to have something that's set and structured so people can follow along with it. So, so it's it's kind of like a, a mixed bag. It sounds like there that it's about a 50-50 split, you know, at least on this call of like people that want more of a structured sound and people that like to, to be a little bit more improvisational. We, we, yeah, are, different. Can, we are different. Yeah. I think you can have both though, just going to Tyler's point. I think you can have both and, and we do that. And I think that's where we are strong suit when we are um, 
writing songs is that um, we do have sections like solo sections, let's say, where those things can change. Um, and that and there, there are opportunities for me live to connect with the audience too, because during those sections, that's usually where I'm speaking. I might be doing some scat. I might be back and forth call and response with somebody else in the band, you know, like, so those, those sections are always, you know, present in our songs and that's kind of how we keep things fresh and yeah. And, and so we do, we're able to kind of merge those two concepts into one. I'm a little stuck here on this concept. I think, I think what it is, is that the album might, um, influence us to think about, you know, for instance, maybe I get an electronic feed for my trumpet, or maybe we do think about getting a trombone player or getting an organist because some of the songs we think really benefited from the layers. But that's not really a change for Zen worship because when we write songs, even though at the end of the day, you know, the bones and the structure and the architecture is the same and we have those catchy lines, there are always vamps and solo sections where we can improvise, there are some jazz, you know, as much as there's punk rock, you know, right pop roots in the band, there is a lot of jazz influence. And we always try and gig to get, we always try to do something a little bit fresh and a little bit new. And so maybe the album will inspire us to try some new things, but that's Zen worship, you know, we're constantly bringing in new players and trying new things with songs that are what we try to make songs into hits. But so I don't, so it's kind of a yes and no. It's like, a, it's new, but it's not new for each song. No, and I, I think that's a good point because we, we want to be a constantly evolving band. We don't want to just be stuck to something. And even the discussion within the past, you know, a couple of months as we've been wrapping up the album, preparing to release it, it is simultaneously also about what is the future of the band. And the future of the band is, you know, we brought on a new drummer. He's not with us right now to replace Phil because Phil had moved and left. Um, and so we're thinking about, okay, we're going to be writing new music too. And so, you know, there's, there's a lot of newness, constant movement, um, constant ways to evolve. So we want to be rooted in something that we, we like, but not be too um, tethered to it. I mean, we're not fish. We're not like a jam band. That's like, here's, no, the, no, no. And here's the vibe, go out there, play. I mean, these are really well-written songs with great lyrics, but, you know, we want every player in this band, we all have completely different personalities. And so we want everyone to have this moment to stretch out. And I think that the album really like showed us we can do that. We can bring our own newness to it as well. And I don't know if that's at all yeah. still nebulous. <laughs> well, just to close, um, in a personal anecdote is that I feel like I'm thinking about one of the last shows we played and um, and I just remember looking out in the audience and there were people singing along with me on these songs that, you know, that they've been to many shows, they know this song so well and they have, they're singing the words along with me. And in my entire life, like in any band, that has never happened. So, like, and so I think the idea of like having this album um, for them, for these people that have come to show after show and they know the song so much that they, they sing along. Like this is, this is something, it's, it's for us, of course, but it's for them too. And so I think it's, um, especially like Allison said, when we can't be gigging and other stuff. Um, I think this is, this is just something that's really cool that we can, we can put out there in the world and, and it's exciting. So aside from the fan service and, and the obvious like, like self actualization of all of this work that you've put into it, is there any specific takeaway that you hope a listener has when they're listening to this, especially because they'll be listening to it still in this kind of, you know, socially distant environment? You know, what is what is something that you hope that they'll pull away from the experience of, of listening to all of this effort that you've put into the recording? My that, uh, oh, oh Ed Roberto. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Roberto. Uh, just that they will look forward to that this COVID pandemic will, will uh, end so they can come back to listen to us. <laughs> I really give it, I want to give it the, the, like a teaser, you know, like uh, that they will crave to, 
to go back to to see us on on the stage. You know, and, we're still and here. We establish the, the yeah. contact, uh, that which is which is the magic that we like. You know, we'll play a gig and we'll get together. You know, I really hope that it will be the the thing that will can make it waiting the waiting part. Yeah. I mean, my secret hope, you know, when you, when you like listen to songwriters talk about what they've done with songs, it's intentionality. And my intention with some of the songs, and I hope the whole album, is to create in listeners a very uplifting, positive emotion. So what I want, I, I was just listening to the whole album, you know, beginning to end this morning in the car. And at the end of it, I felt uplifted, even though I've heard the songs many, many times. I want to recreate that same emotion in other people who listen to it. And I think that that's very important, especially in this time period with COVID, with the winter coming, with you know, the transition with the presidential election, that um, this, this is a positive emotion and a positive journey that people can go through. And that's the power of music. Like music should create a, a new feeling in somebody when they hear it. And that's, that's really my, my hope because that's the intentionality behind our music writ large and kind of the whole purpose of what we're doing. I agree. I didn't hear any opposition, so it sounded yeah. like those were. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the two takeaways would be um, the intentionality that, uh, that people are going to feel what it is that you have been trying to recreate for them in a, in a live experience. And then mm -hmm. to create a little bit of, of a hope for being able to see you back on stage again uh, sometime in 2021, I'm sure, right? Yeah, and we're still yes. here. We're still here and we want you to dance to our music. So. Yeah, and, and I would just say even more simply, just to dance. Like, <laughs> these songs are really danceable. Most, you know, I'm trying to think if there's one that's not, I don't even know. <laughs> like, they're pretty <laughs> much all real danceable. So just dance, you know, just to move and feel good, yeah. Thank you all so much for your time. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I'm, I'm very, very excited for you. And uh, I'll be excited to try to time one of my trips back to DC when I can see you all in person. Thank you. We yeah, really great. Thanks, Daniel. Have a Thank lovely evening. Thank you so much. Enjoy Bye. you. Bye. 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 Bye.